I literally don't own any of the books I am about to talk about. Hello, hello everyone, my name is Laura and this is my channel Laura's Little Library and today I am doing a tag video. quarterly year crisis book tag and this was created by Roisin over at Roisin's pages I'll have her link down below and I was tagged by Paige from pages with Paige I will also have her link down below and this is such a fun tag and it's kind of perfect to do I mean obviously it's a quarterly year book tag so like it makes sense to do at the quarter of the year but also because I've had such an amazing reading year that I actually have so much that I can talk about so it's perfect that there is a tag for it. So there are nine questions and the first one is how many books have you read this year? And as of right now I have read 48 books and I'm about to finish one today so out of my goal of a hundred books for this year. <laughs> I'm shocked too. I'm surprised too. The second question is have you found a possible favorite or what is your closest to being like a high five star rating and I have found a couple of favorites like I'm gonna have such a hard time choosing my favorite book of the year even if I don't read any other books that I love this year I can only think of like four books to narrow it down with so I've got Tokyo Ever After I adore adored that book. I loved the characters, the narration style, the story, literally everything about it I loved. I have a reading vlog of me reading it. It was a very impromptu reading vlog where I picked up the book, started reading it, and went, oh, I'm gonna love this so much that this should be vlogged. <laughs> so I'll have that linked up above. But then I also read For the Wolf, Tokyo Ever After is by Amiko Jean, by the way, and then For the Wolf, I have one book that I own out of all of them. For the Wolf is by Hannah Witten. This, I don't I loved the romance, I loved the magic, I loved the storytelling. I mean, it's not particularly special, but like, it just was what I needed right at the time and I loved it so much. I'm really looking forward to the second book coming out in June. So this is a contender for my favorite. And then the Bromance Book Club and Isn't It Bromantic books 1 and 4 of the Bromance Book Club are also some favorites. I rated them 5 stars hands down. Love the characters, love the issues that they talk about. Like. There's so much to those books that I love. So those are currently the top four at the moment. I don't know if one of those will be my favorite of the year overall, but it is very likely because those have been some of the best books. And I've rated a lot of five stars this year, like I've given out quite a few, but those are the ones that just stand above all the rest. Question number three, any one star or least favorites of the year? I have not given out any one stars yet, but I have given out a couple two stars and that was Siege and Storm by Lee Bardugo. I could not. Oh, I, the characters drove me up a wall. The book was so slow. Like you literally could have just taken the one main event that happened in that book and put it in either the first or the third book. Like there didn't need to be a whole second book or if there did, it could be so much shorter or you could add more into it. Like I just, it drove me nuts. And then also Spells of Iron and Bone. I, I thought this book was a different book. <laughs> like, I got the Tarot Academy and the Zodiac Academy mixed up. I had seen a lot of people talking about the Zodiac Academy. So I read the wrong book, but I still read it. And I still didn't like it. Even, I didn't know much about the Zodiac Academy, so it wasn't like I was expecting one thing and then just didn't get it. I, but like I read through that book and I went, I didn't like this book. It was not as well written as it could have been. Our main character was too OP but also not much of a character and same with all the side characters. Like it just, like there were very few elements of it that I actually liked and so it was another two star read. So those were kind of my least favorites so far. Number four is your most read genre and I think it's still YA fantasy. I know contemporary, like YA contemporary romance is a close second because I read a lot of those closer to the beginning of the year in January because I had a lot of like Christmas YA romance contemporaries that I read after Christmas. But I still think YA fantasy has got, has got it beat. So yeah, my favorite genre, thankfully. Question number five is a book that surprised you. And I say The Shadows Between Us by Trisha Levenseller, Levenseller surprised me. 
because I didn't expect to love it as much as I did because I knew it was a dark fantasy romance and I knew that was what I wanted because I had been wanting to get into more dark fantasy romance and I thought the premise of that one sounded interesting. You know, her plan was to woo the Shadow King, marry him, kill him, take over the kingdom. That sounds like a good book, right? Then I started reading the book and I learned about our main character and I just went, this went from a good book to a great book. Like my expectations just went sky high and the book fully delivered. Like I was not expecting it to be as good as it was. I like, I knew it was gonna, I hoped it was gonna be good. I thought it was gonna be good. And then it was amazing. So it surprised me and it was a happy surprise. Number six is a book that came out in 2022 that you haven't read yet. So there are plenty of books that have come out this year that I haven't read yet, like My Dearest Darkest. But the book I want to answer this question for is one that I haven't even purchased yet because there have been a couple of books that have come out this year that I want to read that I have purchased and are on my physical TBR. So like I've made moves toward it. But there is one book that recently I've been thinking, wow, I really wanted to read this book and I haven't done anything. I haven't looked for it at the library. I haven't tried to buy it at a bookstore. I haven't looked for it like online, like just nothing like that. And that was The Kindred by Alicia Dow. And so this is a sci-fi and there are some elements of romance in it, I believe. So sci-fi is not one of my main read genres. But I'm currently reading two sci-fis right now. And so th those just kind of reminded me that, hey, The Kindred was a book that I was excited for. And I wanted to read even though it was sci-fi. Like, I still like sci-fi. I just don't gravitate it as much as I would like fantasy. Like, I'll take fantasy over sci-fi. But theoretically, I like to read them both. So I was just like, oh my word, this book has come out. And I was interested in reading it. And so I should act on that interest and actually try and read it. So The Kindred by Alicia Dow, it has to do with like a prince type character and a commoner character and they're supposed to be like soulmates but you know people don't or they they keep it hidden because like why would he, he marry a commoner but then uh, the planet like gets destroyed or something like that and they have to meet and as they're meeting they're fleeing for their life and so it's an interesting start to that relationship. That was a very brutal synopsis, but I, I'm pretty sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. Question number seven is a goal that you have, that you set for this year that you have succeeded on. And there are kind of two goals I've been succeeding with jointly. So one goal was to do something new on my channel, and the other goal was to specifically read more of my series and hopefully finish them. And I combined those by hosting a readathon called the Continuathon. That's all about reading and finishing series. That is happening right now, or it just ended. Yeah. So this video, as this video has gone up, it the readathon ended like two days ago. Uh, if this video goes up on time, the readathon will have ended two days ago. But it was a two-week readathon called the Continuathon, and we just focused on reading, continuing, and finishing series. So. I did something new on my channel, I hosted a readathon and I was so happy with it and I focused on my series a little bit more. I got some more books read and figured some things out. And then the eighth question is a, a goal for 2022 that I need to focus more on. And again, I'll go with two for this one. Uh, one is joining a book club. I really want to join a book club just to like talk to people more directly about books and kind of get their feedback. Like I love talking to you guys on YouTube about books um, and replying to your comments and seeing what you're reading and things like that, but also just having an immediate conversation with someone just seemed really nice. There have been a couple book clubs I've been interested in, but I just haven't put in any effort to read them as they are online because, you know, if they, they choose a book and my library doesn't have that book, then I just can't read it and then I don't feel engaged in the book club and so I just never really joined the book club. Um, and I haven't looked into in-person book clubs yet um, because some places they're starting up again now that uh, a lot of people are vaccinated and have gotten booster shots. Um, but then on top of that I'm going to be going home over the summer so it's kind of hard to be in a physical book club 
now and then leave for three months or join one at home and then leave after three months. So it's I'm kind of in this sticky situation. I really want to join a book club and one that I feel immersed in or that I am part of. Um, so I gotta, I gotta figure that out. And then the final question, question number nine, are some booktubers, bookstagrammers, book talkers uh, that I would recommend for 2022. So neither of these books, booktubers I'm going to talk about have started their channels in 2022, but I, I think they would be great booktubers to watch in 2022. So one of them is Hugo from The Scientist Reading World, and the other is Jane from The Bookaholic. They were both co-hosts for my readathon, The Continuathon, and I love their channel. Jane does a lot of really fun content and has this really cool experience of reading a lot of translated fiction into English uh, because she does uh, speak Hebrew initially, so she has a lot of fun like translating videos and like she can play off a lot of fun content with that and then Hugo has a lot of really good just one book review videos. They're just short little videos. He read this book, these are his thoughts and feelings and they're really nice to watch if you're like debating whether or not you want to pick up a book or if you're part way through it and you want to talk to someone about it and if he has a video then it's just really nice to watch. Both YouTubers that I would recommend to watch this year. Anyway, thank you all so much for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Feel free to subscribe as I post on Sundays and Wednesdays. Comment down below uh, how your year has been going so far. I know I've been doing really well and some other people have been doing really well, but I, if that is not the case for you, I would love to hear from you. Otherwise, I also have all of my bookish social media linked down below, both like Book Talk and Bookstagram and Goodreads and all that fun jazz. Uh, but yeah, so until I see you all in the next video, I wish you happy reading!